Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today we're going to be working with step and repeat inside of Photoshop to make this geometric spiral shape that you see up on the screen right now and then we're going to add this holographic crystal texture to it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here to file new and I'm going to be working with a 1920 by 1080 document resolution 72. We're in RGB 8 bit. I'm going to go ahead and click create. We're going to start this pattern with the step and repeat. So this may feel a little bit more advanced if you're not familiar with it. So you might want to, you know, do it a couple of times just to get yourself comfortable with it. Um, but it's going to be a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple to understand. But, uh, you know, for if you're a beginner to this, it may feel a little bit complicated at first. So just, you know, do it a couple of times and you should be okay. We're going to start here with the shapes tool. I am going to be working with the ellipse tool and I'm just going to make this shape about 650 pixels wide by 650 pixels high. All I did was click on the screen anywhere once I have this selected to bring this up and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So that's just going to make that shape. I'm going to hit the V on the keyboard to bring that up and uh, bring it back onto the canvas. So I'm going to bring it right around here. So I have my properties here on the side so they they popped up right here for me but if you don't have that there you can come up here to window and choose properties from there or you can press the letter U on your keyboard and that's going to bring up all of your options here. So for this area we just need to make sure that exclude overlapping shapes is selected. Uh, you can also select that right here in the properties. And that's pretty much it for that. Now I'm going to hit the letter V to bring this up. So sometimes you won't have this little anchor showing here. So if you don't have it showing here, you can come up here and make sure that this uh, show transform controls is checked off. That way you have that available to you. So before we get started, we want to activate our transform tool. So we're going to press Option, Command, and the letter T on the keyboard. That's pretty much going to start recording what you're doing. So this is the first uh, step in the step and repeat. We're just um, setting up the step. And the first thing we're going to do is come and grab this center point right here and bring it over here to the corner. That's going to make this the center point now. So it's going to move according to this center point instead of you know in the center of the shape itself. So we're bringing that over there to the corner and now I'm going to hold the shift key on the keyboard and you see the little double arrow right there that little bent arrow. So I have the shift key on the keyboard selected and I'm going to drag this up until you see that negative 15 degrees then you can let it go don't hit enter, don't touch anything on the keyboard. Now we're going to come up here to the controls and make sure that this little link is selected. So if you don't have it selected, it's going to look like that. Just click on that. That's going to maintain the aspect ratio. So if I make changes here, it will also make changes here. I'm going to come here to the percentage value and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I'm going to make it 93.5 and you can see that it also made that change right here on the side on the height that way we keep that perfect circle. Okay now you can press enter. Now we're going to use another series of keystrokes on our keyboard and that is going to be shift option command and the letter T. This is going to be our repeat. With the option command T we started to record the changes with this one this is just going to repeat the transformation that we just created. So shift option command and the letter T. So I'm on a Mac so I'm going to do shift option command and the letter T and you can see that that has duplicated that shape and you can see up here that I now have two different shapes. And this one is kind of up a little bit and it's a little bit smaller because we made all of those changes. So we made it 93.5% smaller and we adjusted the angle to negative 15. So those are all the changes that were made to this one. Now 
We're going to do that again. Shift, Option, Command, and the letter T. You can see it's done it again, this time based off of the one that we just created. So each time it's going to get smaller and it's going to adjust negative 15 degrees. So we're going to do it again. Shift, Option, Command, the letter T. Now if you keep the Shift, Option, Command buttons held down and you press the letter T and you keep on pressing the letter T, you're going to see that you're going to start to create this spiral. You can keep doing that until you get to the middle section here and you can cover it all the way through as many times as you need. So now if you look over here, you're going to see that we have all of these shapes here. So we're going to grab the very first shape, hold the shift key and grab that top shape. And I'm going to press command and the letter E to merge those shapes together. Now what it did here was cut out all of the overlapping area of that shape. So it is now one shape and it's uh, cut out all of the overlapping sections. So let me come back in here. So when we uh, made sure to exclude overlapping shapes, that's exactly what we did here. So I'm gonna press the letter V on the keyboard. I'm just gonna make this much bigger. I wanna cover a lot of the canvas, but I don't wanna lose my spiral. So I'm gonna kinda of come down and move it here and then and I can make this as big as I want to. This is not a raster image. This is a vector shape. So you can make it as big or as small as you want to without losing any quality, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And you can, you know, move this anywhere you want on the canvas, but I'm going to leave mine over here. So this looks really good as it is, but I'm just going to add some crystal effects to this uh, just because I felt like these right here kind of look like the crystals from a chandelier or something. So I'm just going to add that um, quickly. But this is pretty much it for the step and repeat. So let's go ahead and um, add that crystal just to see what effects we can get from that. I'm going to right click, convert this to a smart object, and then I'm going to come here to filter, noise, add a noise. Now for the noise, we're doing 200%. Distribution is going to be Gaussian. Make sure that monochromatic is not checked. If you check it, you're going to lose that color. So we want to make sure that that's not checked because we want to do a holographic type crystal. So we'll go ahead and leave that unchecked and I'm going to click OK. Now we're going to come back with the same layer selected, the ellipse, this big shape right here that we created. I'm going to come here to Filter, Filter Gallery, and I'm using these right here. So let me turn that one off first. So you can see the settings for this one. Move this over. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's a little close up, so it looks like a big mess. But um, if you back out a little, you'll see what that crystal looks like. So this first one, this is the glass. We're gonna be using the glass filter twice. So that is gonna be uh, in the distort folder and it's the second one over. For the first glass filter, our distortion is going to go up to 20, smoothness 15, our texture is frosted, and our scale is 100%. Now we're going to add that second, and for the second glass, we've just brought this down a little bit, our distortion, or actually halfway down or more. So our distortion is 8, smoothness is 8. Texture is the same, frosted, and our scale has stayed the same at 100%. So this is what we've got. So we've got this kind of crystally looking design there. And then I'm gonna just add a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna double click right here on the far right hand side to bring up the layer styles. And I'm gonna add an inner shadow. Let me bring this over here so you can see a little bit better. For the inner shadow, uh, we're using multiply for the blend mode. And then we're using 50% gray. So RGB values are all 50. Distance is 20 pixels. Our size is 15. We're also going to add an inner glow to this. So I want this to look kind of like a bevel where you're getting light on the top and then you have this like bevel that's showing up here. So for that, we're just adding that inner glow. Our blend mode is screen opacity 35. I added a little bit of noise to that. So 15% noise. Our color is white and it is a solid color. Technique is softer, source center, 
choke 100% size 20 pixels and then I'm also going to add a drop shadow to this so we're at multiply might bring uh, this up to 50% or the the color of the shadow will be 50% gray opacity 35% angle 90 degrees distance 5 pixels spread zero size 16 and that's pretty much it for that and then for the background I think I'll add a little bit of noise let's see what it looks like with white so we're gonna come here to uh, filter noise add a noise we're just adding a little bit of interest to the background but for the amount is gonna be very little maybe 5% or so and I am gonna check monochromatic for that one so I just want to add a little bit of texture to the background and that's it um, you can change the color if you like to maybe a darker color so this stands out a little bit more. It's a pretty simple thing to do inside of Photoshop but the results look like they took forever to make. Now if you're interested in other glitter styles I do have an entire playlist on tons of gemstone glitter and luxury style textures. If you're interested in that I will leave a link down in the description so you can check that out. If this tutorial was helpful to you at all, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know uh, what you did and didn't like about the tutorial. And if there's anything that you're interested in seeing on this channel, please make sure to comment down below and I will definitely put that on my list. And you can also head over to prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.